The other ship hung in the sky like a pendant, silver in the ether light cast by the nebula. Waverly and Kieran, lying together on their mattress of hay bales, took turns peering at it through a spyglass. They knew it was a companion vessel to theirs, but out here, in the vastness of space, it could have been as tiny as a one-man or as immense as a star. There were no points of reference. Our ships are so ugly, Waverly said. I've seen pictures, but in person. I know, said Kieran, taking the spyglass from her. It looks like it has cancer or something. The other ship, the New Horizon, was exactly the same misshapen design as the Empyrean. It was egg-shaped, covered with domes that housed the different ship systems, making it look like a Jerusalem artichoke, the kind Mrs. Stilwell always dropped off with Kieran's family after the fall harvest. The engines released a bluish glow that illuminated the particles of the nebula, causing the occasional spark to fly when the heat of the engines ignited a pocket of hydrogen. Of course, the ships were accelerating too quickly to be harmed by these small explosions. Do you think they're like us? She asked him. Kieran tugged at one of her dark brown curls. Sure they are. They have the same mission as we do. They must want something from us, Waverly said, or they wouldn't be here. What could they want? he said to reassure her. Everything we have, they have. Inwardly, Kieran admitted that it was very strange they could see the ship at all. By all rights, the New Horizon should be trillions of miles ahead of them, considering it was launched a full year before the Empyrean, 43 years ago. The ships had never been close enough to get a glimpse of each other. For some reason, the New Horizon had reduced its speed to allow the Empyrean to catch up. In fact, given the distance and the velocity at which both ships traveled, it must have decelerated years ago, a radical deviation from the mission plan. The other ship was a source of excitement aboard the Empyrean. Some people had made large welcome signs with big, exuberant lettering and hung them in the portholes pointed toward the other ship. Others were suspicious and whispered that the crew must have some disease, otherwise why wouldn't the captain let them come aboard? Captain Jones had made an announcement soon after the ship appeared, telling the crew not to be alarmed, that he and the other captain were in negotiations and all would be explained. But days had gone by and nothing happened. Soon, the feeling among the crew had changed from excitement to restlessness and finally to fear. The new horizon was all Kieran's parents talked about, the night before, Kieran had quietly spooned vegetable soup into his mouth, listening to them chatter about it. I don't understand why the captain doesn't make another announcement, said his mother Lena, running nervous red fingers through her dark gold hair. The Central Council should at least tell us what's happening, shouldn't they? I'm sure they will when they understand the situation, Kieran's father replied irritably. We don't have anything to fear. I never said I was afraid, Paul, Lena said with a look at Kieran that communicated just how afraid she actually was. I just think it's strange is all. Kieran, his father asked in his firm way, has Captain Jones mentioned the ship to you? Kieran shook his head, though he had noticed the captain seemed more preoccupied lately, and his palsy was worse. It made his hands tremble all the time but he hadn't said a word about the New Horizons' mysterious appearance. Of course he wouldn't say anything to me about it, Kieran said. Well, his mother said as she tapped thoughtfully at her teacup, nothing explicit, of course, but... There was one thing, Kieran said slowly, enjoying the way his parents were hanging on his every word. I went into his office too early yesterday and he was just shutting off the comm station and talking to himself. What was he saying? Lena asked. I only caught one word. He said, liars. His parents looked at each other with real concern. The lines in Paul's face deepened, and Lena's teeth worried at her bottom lip, making Kieran sorry he'd said anything. 